Prepping, we're prepping. Test two, three. Test one, two. Trying to figure out how it's not going to hurt you. Yeah. 
but this is a democracy, and I really appreciate the fact that we're here to have our voices heard and to hear from our electors on something that's going to impact all of us. And speaking as a concerned resident, I'd like to thank Solano Together for pro providing this opportunity, as well as this platform, where we can actually learn about and question the Flannery Associates claims about California Forever's benefits. And this information will ensure to us that our voices and perspectives are not left out of the public policy solutions that our electeds will be coming up, we will be uh, having to, to deal with. And because these issues of impact all of us in some way, or, some way or another, whether it's transportation, the environment, somehow it impacts us. And we need to have our voices heard. So once again, welcome to all of you for participating, for being the participating participants. I run this thing called Democracy Matters. And one of the things that I try to impress upon the young people is that you can't be heard if you're not there, if you don't have a seat at the table. And if you're going to elect somebody to represent you at the table, then you, you have to know who and what they are and whether or not what they believe in is what you believe in and that they're actually representing you. So this is a really, really one of those events that I would tell my kids is this is a real civic learning activity. So thank you for that, Solano. And in addition to thanking all of you for showing up, we'd like to thank all of the electeds who are here as well. From the county, we have Ms. Mashburn, County Supervisors, Monica Brown, and Wanda Williams. From the city of Felicia, we have Steve Young, Terry Scott, Terry Birdseye, and Tom Campbell. From the city of, from Sassoon City, we have Princess Washington. City of Vacaville, we have Sarah Chapman and Jeanette Wiley. <laughs> City of Vallejo, we have Rosanna Brady, Alia, Charles Palmeiras. <laughs> Jackie Edwards Red, uh, is running for office. And for candidates, we also have some candidates here. This is a chance for you to get to meet and greet them and to hear them too. Uh, for the state senate, we have Jimmy Jones, Christopher Cabaldon, Rosanna, Tom Bogue, and Jackie Elwood. <laughs> we have Wanda Wallace. For board supervisors, we have Cassandra James, Rochelle Sherlock, Laura Dissom, and Chad Lindell. And for the mayor of the local, we have Andre Sorensen. And just because they're no longer serving in office doesn't mean that they don't care what happens. We have a uh, former mayor of um, Fairfield, Karen McMillan. All the board of supervisors, Wayne Crone. Former Council of Fairfield, Marilyn Farley. <laughs> Former Mayor of Venetia, Elizabeth Patterson. <laughs> Former Board of Supervisors, Dan Hewitt. <laughs> and some of our distinguished organizational leaders here tonight, to, this afternoon, are Don Lowry, Chair of Solano County Democratic Central Committee. <laughs> Michelle Walker Gibson, president of the Tri City NAACP. <laughs> and Jimmy White, president of the Northern Solano Democratic Club. <laughs> All right, Solano Together wants you to know that this isn't just an opportunity to uh, reject a development proposal. It's an opportunity for residents to come together and discuss with our elected officials here, our elected representatives, what we want for the future of our, our county. And more than anything, we are here to help direct the future of Solano County instead of having it decided for us. So we welcome the public to engage in this coalition. 
We want to begin, we want this, this coalition to be an inclusive group. An inclusive group where critical thinking yes. and attentive listening skills <laughs> flourish. <laughs> All of that happens when I'm sitting down reading a book or something in a nice, quiet, rainy afternoon. So here you are in this nice big room with other people listening and paying attention and learning something. Great atmosphere for it, right? Yeah. So thanks again for coming. So, but aside from the chit chat and the food and the food that we have here, and uh, and we want to do a special thanks out to uh, Lorraine from Eat Well Farms for. For the script. <laughs> so aside from the chit chatting and getting to know them, some of us are here because we want to learn more about Flannery Associates and the uh, California Forever Project that they're up to. So if you're unsure where you stand on this, this is an opportunity to learn about why so many people are already have already come together to express their concerns about the project. And just to make sure that we're all on the same page, just a little, little brief history here. From 2017 to September of this year, Flannery secretly, might I add, undemocratically, <laughs> bought up land and sued farmers who didn't sell. In August, we started to learn more about their intentions with plans being released in mid-January. And we all know the proponents of the project released their initiative for signature gathering. But in their rush to minimize the process, they rushed to do it. In that rush, they've already had to amend the initiative due to legal concerns. So we're hoping that this coalition can both bring the community together to envision a future for the county that we can all get behind. And that voters are receiving all of the information necessary, you know, just like everything, there's two sides, there's even two sides to you. There's two sides to everything. So we don't want to hear all that Flannery thinks is good. We want to hear all, everything. Because what may be good for you might just be bad for me. But that doesn't mean we can't do something that can be good for all of us, right? And, right. And we can't do that until everybody understands everything about what's going on. So we need to just give a big hurrah for uh, Solano together for making sure that that happens. So we want, we're here today to make sure that we get, um, we get all of the information we need to make some really good uh, choices in November when this initiative is on the ballot. So you're going to hear from some amazing speakers today who are deeply rooted in Solano County about what they are about why they are here today now take note because if you get inspired by anything or anyone you hear today and you want to engage and you know everything costs money even your engagement so if you want to get engaged and you want to are you want and you want to donate donate there are QR codes this and that's the other thing I wanted to say young people are doing this so don't ask me what a QR code is. <laughs> Check in with some of the young people around here because they'll be able to tell you. But that's the way things are done these days. So if you want to get involved in any kind of way to learn more about what's happening and to do your part as a citizen, look for the QR code that can tell you exactly. And um, you can also visit us on the web website at solanotogether.org. All right. Or you can deliver checks. Or you can what? Deliver checks. Oh! <laughs> Open it up, Alice. Open it up. I have to put the mic down, okay? This is a check for $2,000 from the Sacramento Valley Chapter, California Native Plant Society. Well, now we're off to a good start. 
start. We got money under our belt. We got a house full of people. There's food and drink over there. And now all we need to do is to hear what our electives are going to do about it. So our first speaker is Princess Washington, pro Mayor Pro Tem of Sassoon City, and uh, Chair of the Solano Chapter of the Solano of the uh, Sierra Club. Well, I got her right. Thank you. Thank you guys for being here. And thank you for joining us today in the heart of Sassoon City, where the spirit of Solano County beats strong. Round of applause for that. It is truly a pleasure to welcome you all here, representing various corners of this incredible county. As we gather, it is not just a gathering of individuals, but a united front committed to one common cause, to keep Solano together. Solano County, our home, is facing challenges, particularly on the environmental front. Often, we think about threats to our geography and natural resources, but today, I want to draw your attention to the unseen dangers that lurk in the shadows. Picture, if you will, Solano County stripped of its open spaces, devoid of its precious agricultural land. What would remain of our beloved county without its marshlands and delicate delta ecosystems? Our very identity is intertwined with these landscapes, and their preservation is non-negotiable. These elements are not just features of our environment. They are the lifeblood of Solano County, defining who we are and shaping our collective future. Consider the impact on our daily lives, our economy, and our well-being if we were to lose the, these essential components. Now let's take a moment to recognize the significance of Travis Air Force Base, a cornerstone of Solano County. It is not only the single largest employer, but also a vital economic driver, contributing significantly to our prosperity and growth. Imagine a Solano County and the world without the strong presence of Travis Air Force Base, and you begin to grasp the gravity of the situation that we face. Today, I stand before you with a call to action, a call to protect the future of Solano County. We face a proposed ballot measure by California Forever, a measure that if passed could negatively alter the very fabric of our community. It is our responsibility as proud residents of Solano County to preserve what makes us unique, to safeguard our environment, and to secure the future for military base operations for generations to come. We are not merely spectators in this unfolding story. We are active participants. The power to shape our destiny <coughs> lies in our hands. And it starts with the choices that we make at the ballot box. I implore each and every one of you to stand up for Solano County, to cast your vote against the proposed ballot measure by California Forever. Today, let us unite in our commitment to keep Solano together. Our collective voice is our most potent weapon in this fight. By rejecting this measure, we send a clear message that Solano County's identity is open spaces, agricultural land, marshes, and vital economic institutions are not up for negotiation. <laughs> and together, I have a really strong emphasis on being together. We can ensure that Solano County remains a thriving, vibrant community that cherishes its natural beauty and preserves its unique character. Let us pledge to stand together, salon together, and to pass on the legacy of our beloved county to the generations that follow.
Hi, everyone. Monroe County Agriculture in the Montezuma Hills and Jefferson Prairie is under an unprecedented attack by an organization that sees agricultural land as a waste space with little to no value. Sadly, this mindset is a poisonous way of thinking that has been going on for decades throughout California. A strongly pushed narrative in California is there is not enough housing in the state. Unironically, developers aren't jumping to build on difficult mountain terrain with less than favorable weather. Instead, they're targeting rolling hills or flatlands in preferred climates close to major cities and which can be developed for the greatest profit margin. Solano County Farm Bureau supports the general plan and county regulations that limit the expansion of urban centers into rural space and is in favor of cities developing within their own borders to satisfy housing needs, but vehemently opposes the transition of productive farmland for development. Our commitment to present preserving farmland is not rooted in resistance to progress, but in a uh, vision for, uh, sorry, but in a vision for balanced and responsible growth that respects the needs of both urban and rural communities. California Forever disregards this idea and is instead uh, resigned to developing productive agricultural land while marketing the land to the public as wasted space. While the Montezuma Hills and Jefferson Prairie may not appear to be productive from drivers on Highway 12, the reality is that just one farmer in the area produces enough wheat to make over 6 million loaves of bread per year. While farming in the area contributes to four of the top 10 commodities grown in the county, cattle and calves, alfalfa, wine grapes, and sheep and lambs, when we quantify these numbers, we can see just how valuable this area of farmland is. But farmland is not just a commodity. It is a finite resource that sustains our local economy, provides jobs, and ensures food security. Solano County farmers provide ideal grazing resources for local land purchased by Superior Farms in Dixon. Superior Farms employs 166 people, most of whom reside in the county, which equates to over a million dollars per month that goes back into our local economy. If you, had, if you reduce the amount of agricultural land companies such as Superior Farms may eventually have to lay off employees or possibly close outright which ultimately reduces the money circulating in our local economy, while also creating food scarcity and increased prices at the grocery store. Currently, 2% of the U.S. population feeds the, 90, the remaining 98%, and the average California farmer is approaching 60 years of age. As, yeah. uh, as a society, we must stop pretending that food is an infinite resource that magically appears in our grocery store and instead understand the ripple effect that will happen when we remove agricultural producing farmland from the equation. I wish I could stand here and say that development of ag land is the only burden to California farmers. The reality is that we also face a daily onslaught of regulatory challenges from federal, state, and local governments. These regulations limit the number of hours employees can work, the vehicles we can drive, the age of the equipment we can operate, and force increased taxes and fees onto already burdensome costs of doing business in California. Now, as these challenges, fighting for your livelihood against an uncaring organization with bottomless pockets intent on burying you in a legal battle. And you might understand the plight faced by your brother and sister farmers in the Montezuma Hills and Jefferson Prairie. Farming in California is like fighting a losing battle, but we're still here day after day, caring for our farms, us, the sweet earth we are blessed to operate on. It's our obligation to our animals, our crops, our families, communities, and country. We provide, uh, we pride ourselves on working quietly and diligently, and it should be an example to California leaders and residents that there is some, something fundamentally wrong with our society if farmers are forced to fight for the land they steward. Thank you.
balance and responsible growth. Next, we have Charles Palmares from Vallejo City, uh, he's a Vallejo City Council member. I want to walk around. Howdy. Uh, okay. I'm Charles Palmaris, council member from the city of Vallejo. Uh, I'm relatively new to city council, having just finished my first year in office. One of the priorities that I campaigned on and that I continue to strive for is to ensure that Vallejo has enough housing for its workforce and its middle class families, which means that we need to produce more high quality housing options for every income. Make no mistake, Vallejo is not immune to the housing crisis and we need to produce more for everyone. On the face of the California Forever project, it seems they've adopted a number of urbanist principles that it's appealing transit-oriented development, walkable, compact neighborhoods, and missing middle housing for the working class. As a former planning commissioner, and now as a member, I embrace these principles, these community building principles, 100%. But in the context of California forever, I cannot support this project. Vallejo is fighting tooth and nail to bring more housing to our community. How much more difficult is it gonna be when we have to compete suddenly against an organization, a project that is drawing more resources for their housing? How much more difficult is it gonna be for Vallejo to attract more investment for infill development, more housing near its transit hubs, our transit hubs, and toward more housing for the working class that live in Vallejo today. Not some fantasy, hypothetical thing. Folks who are hurting right now. <laughs> California Forever lies in the face of traditional community development that has worked for centuries. You build communities where the people are. You build cities where the economy is. California Forever has neither. <laughs> Modern history is replete with examples of underproducing, unfinished, failed, stitch built cities, just as the one Flannery Associates is proposing. So I'll say this to the developers and investors who are paying attention, build in Solano County cities, build in Sassoon City, build in Rio Vista, build in Fairfield and build in Vallejo. Thank you. They're here today, and we just want to support them. So when Jan Stromick, CEO of California Forever, thought of the best place to build for a new city, 
He dreamt, let's build a new urban center between the pioneers, Mr. Honker and Mrs. Goosehaven. Uh, I don't fancy myself an urban planner or an environmental scientist, but I never thought to myself that the area where roads are named for fields that honkers feed on and a place that is literally called a haven for geese were ideal places for a city. Before I even had a public opinion on Flannery Associates, I had signed up for California Forever's Community Advisory Board, a recent college grad from UCLA, and a seventh-generation resident of I sent my application in and was given a response to fly to Los Angeles to meet one of their lawyers. I was perplexed. When I refused, the lawyer wanted to meet me one-on-one -on -one at a hotel in Sacramento. No other community advisory board member that I had spoken to was ever greeted by a lawyer. What they had conspired to do, I don't know. But this was one of many actions that sowed my mistrust towards them. Mr. Stromick has not been the kindest uh, individual to myself and others. He has waged a $500 million war of attrition against our farmer neighbors. He deeply insults them by claiming they only call themselves farmers to gain sympathy. He has blamed my propensity for political activism on Solano County Water Agency's vote to discontinue conversations with California Forever, as if I was a member of that board. <laughs> he repeatedly marginalized his opposition against the California Forever project. He has attempted to intimidate me by making political disagreements personal and bringing my family into political conversations. His communication skills are so poor and disrespectful that his head planner for the project, Gabriel Metcalf, actually had to apologize to me for the way Mr. Stromick talks to me. He has the tra traits of a type of leader so common in the world now, a blamer and a divider. It's telling when one of the most vocal opponents of California Forever is a young person. A member uh, of a generation set to reap the supposed benefits of the project. Young people like me desperately call out for more affordable housing. Yet there is nothing in the initiative about a breakdown of what is to be below market, market, and above market housing. Young people like me will watch and sit in traffic uh, on I-80 and Highway 12 and look at vehicles bottleneck at the Rio Vista Bridge. Young people like me who become residents would contribute to fund after fund for infrastructure in the new community infrastructure that is already present in our existing cities that desperately need investment. Young people like me will watch the cost of living skyrockets as the project is approved. Ultimately, young people like me will bear the true costs and burdens of the project. Solano County is not perfect. <laughs> Solano County is not perfect, but let's embrace and celebrate our achievements not hit the brakes on the strides we are making to make our county a better place to live. We are both the number three most diverse county and number three land and wool producer, not in California, but in the United States. <laughs> Compared to six similarly situated counties in California in the Bay Area, we have the second highest persons per square mile, lowest percentage of residents in unincorporated areas, uh, fourth lowest population of poverty, fourth highest population with access to health care, and third lowest housing prices. What Solano County needs is not a blamer and divider who forges bad templates for our future generations. Instead, we need to improve on the progress Solano County has made. We need an alternate vision to California forever, a vision that I'm proud to say Solano Together and myself are championing. Thank you. Uh, in 1996, I have lived in Vacaville, Susun, and now in Kirkfield. I worked uh, for Solano County Health and Social Services for over 22 years. Karen McMillan was my co-worker there. <laughs> uh, and I love it here. 
because we are a diverse and resilient community. This is our home. Uh, when I heard about this new city project, I was concerned. They have been working so secretly on this idea for seven years, buying thousands of acres of farmland between Travis Air Force Base, Susun, and Rio Vista. The project is supposed to be two times the size of the city of El Grove. So we are talking about a massive project. The fact they have been working on this project for so long without including us, residents, our local leaders, and the decision maker shows that they have no respect for us. Thank you. And why did they choose Solano County? Is it because they saw a community of low income, black and brown people, like the brown residents? <laughs> Is it because they think is the uh, they are uh, we are the path of least resistance? Is because they have all the wealth and the power? Is because they think they know better than us? That's a colonialist mentality. Yes. 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 They say they are going to give us all these nice things, you know, being able to uh, walk, kayak, and have all these small, you know, uh, you know, all these small businesses. But what is it going to do to our small businesses? For me, um, it's too little and too late to trust them. If they're successful, we are going to deal with negative consequences. You know how bad the traffic is now? Then think about times 100. They say they will expand the road. We have to pay for it though. Our taxpayer dollars. Our small businesses will struggle. Those homes, will they be for us? I don't think so. We cannot let this happen. But like I said, our community is resilient. We can fight back. We have to fight back. We have to show them that they cannot walk all over us. When this ballot comes, we will show them that we have the power. How? Because we have our vote. They will not take away our self-respect, our agency, our dignity. We know what's best for our community because it's our home. Yes. Thank you very much. Solano County Board of Supervisors Chair, Mitch Masher. Thank you, man. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, I reckon. <laughs> All right, so I have to preface this by saying that we heard a lot uh, uh, today about California forever. And as a supervisor, and the other supervisors in the room can attest to this, I have to be very judicious about what I say about California forever. But fortunately, after speaking to our council, I don't have to be that judicious about what I say about the initiative that has been put out to the public. Because the only voting I'm going to do on that, thank you, the only voting I'm going to do on that is my vote in November, correct? Yeah. So, that said, I'd like to speak some truths about that initiative to everybody today. And forgive me for reading it, because uh, I've been told I got three minutes and I'm trying to stick to five. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm a little height challenge. <laughs> That's great. I don't think. Well, okay, California forever will change the character of the, of the community we've built in Solano County. Yet, this initiative is shockingly light on details, real details. Should the initiative qualify for the November ballot, our community will be asked to provide an up or down on the project. We won't have a chance to provide feedback or consider an alternative growth scenario. It would be typical in a general plan update process. 
and will be forced to make this choice without the basic facts needed to make an informed decision. That should make everyone concerned. We don't know how big the project will actually get, and therefore, how it will impact our roads, schools, and other infrastructure. There's no specific project plan for this. That specific plan is pretty light, right? It's a couple of pages. We don't know where this project will get its supply of water or power and how that could affect the rates we pay. There's no project plan for this. We don't know how many of our residents will be able to afford to live or open businesses in the new development. There are very few project details on this. We don't know if the project's many promises, or voter guarantees as they call them, will be kept. The initiative limits the review processes to ensure that the voter guarantees are accomplished. And those voter guarantees could eventually go away if they incorporate into a city. All those things that are guaranteed, and they say you're going to get this, if they form a city, that all goes away. The list of unknown goes on and on, and these aren't the minor details or the gray areas. This is the real deal about this initiative. First, we didn't ask for it. This project was started and funded by people outside of this county. In order to be built, the project is seeking special treatment. Project backers are asking to bypass the ordinary county process the rest of us follow to ensure consistency of the vision for the county as a whole. It plainly departs from the fundamental concept of that which is urban is municipal and ask the voters to sign off on that departure with little or no information. This vote, vote will be all or nothing. The initiative does not allow our community to consider alternatives and limits the county's ability, your, super, your supervisor's ability, to evaluate and shape specific development plans. The project will have an unknown cost, both monetarily and on resources. It's not just a matter of turning Highway 12 into a parking lot by adding another 400,000 people. The county will be obligated to provide services to the new arrivals, but the initiative asks the county, you the taxpayers, right, to redirect future tax revenue from the project back into new development that could otherwise be used for countywide needs. When I talk about that, I'm talking about fire, I'm talking about share, I'm talking about mental health services for our residents. All those things that all of you still have to pay into the collective pool for those public services, they want it directed back into their project. And then lastly, I'll just say that the project backers haven't been very neighborly. This project has operated in new secrecy with its leaders uh, uh, more likely to, to sue a neighbor than shake their hand. If it sounds like California Ferrer is asking us for a blank check to build an enclave separate from the rest of us, then you're asking the right questions. Please join us in asking these hard questions and demanding real answers. This is our community. We shouldn't be quick to give away our power to decide our future. Thank you. something is terribly wrong when somebody hides for six years and refuses to tell you who they are, what they intend to do, they have acquired 50,000 acres in this county. You know in your gut something is wrong. And I got to tell you, something is terribly, terribly wrong about this proposal. This thing should die an instant death, just as you heard from Mitch and others. It is terrible, terrible planning. For more than 30 years, this county has set out in three different votes of all of the elected officials, all of you, the citizens, three different times saying, you want orderly growth. You want growth to occur in the city.
not in the 50,000 acres or so that have been purchased by a bunch of billionaires who have one good idea of what's going on in this area. But they're going to find out what's going on in this area because the citizens of Solano County will not stand for what is being proposed. The single biggest employer in Solano County is Travis Air Force Base. 30,000 jobs there. Billion dollar or more a year in wages in this community. I'm on the Armed Services Committee. I'm a senior member. I'm responsible for every military base across the world and all of the training and all of the personnel and all the equipment. And I will tell you there is no more important military base on the West Coast for the Air Force than Travis Air Force Base. It is the gateway to the Pacific. If it were not here, we could not present ourselves in the Pacific. It is fundamental. 120,000 times a year, the airmen and women practice critical nighttime programs, critical training on how to enter into a war zone in a contested air base. It's done right here. And the reason it happens here is because of the open space to the east of Travis Air Force Base. Take it away, and one of the principal tasks of Travis Air Force Base disappears. The second principal task is the movement of men, women, materials, ammunition all around the world. Take away the ability of this base to survive and the American security system is severely hampered. Flannery and Associates is set about to put a dagger right in the heart of one of our principal national security assets, Travis Air Force Base. We cannot let that happen. This is national security dependent upon Travis Air Force Base. We know all the trouble that occurs in the Pacific, but every day, C-17s, C-5As, Lee Travis Air Force Base loaded with material for the war in Ukraine. Take that away, and once again, can Ukraine survive? Probably not. Oh, it's a great idea. Not to worry, it's going to be some sort of a community. A main street. We have a main street. It's in Anaheim. It's called Disneyland. <laughs> However, Goofy will be at this <laughs> Traffic. I travel Highway 12 all the time. Fortunately, today, it was relatively benign. <laughs> because all of you are here. But the reality is, this plan is a transportation disaster. Not just for the Highway 12, not just for the state, Rio Vista, Sassoon, Fairfield, Fairfield. This is a disaster for this entire region. You want to add 400,000 new people and all the traffic that goes with it to Interstate 80? Oh, not to worry. We're going to build around Rio Vista so as not to provide congestion. Terrific idea to talk about forever. And then you have a billion dollars in your pocket for a new bridge? I don't think so. Traffic, Travis Air Force Base, among the many issues and many reasons this has got to stop. Any organization that sets about to sue family farmers for $500 million so they can force a sale deserves to be thrown out of this county.
is Congressman Mike Thompson. Alex, thank you very much. Thank you all very, very much for being here. As John said, it's clear that this is an important issue for the people of Solano County. I got involved in this when redistricting switched John and I's representation to represent in Solano County. Folks came for me, they were very, very concerned, and uh, I started into it working with John. And from the beginning, I said I had three concerns national security, food security, and transparency with local participation. Well, in regard to national security, we already know that Travis and the Department of Defense have serious concerns with what's going on. I represented Travis Air Force Base a couple of redistrictings ago when they were talking about shutting it down because of the encroachment back then. This is a serious, serious issue. Food security, we already know that our farming community has been decimated, family farms have been destroyed, and this is not something, you, you heard from Bill, the significance of Solano County farming in this particular area. And transparency, from the start, it's been a disaster. It has been an absolute disaster. And now, by going through the initiative process, to bring this project to fruition, they want to continue to keep Solano County uh, residents in the dark, just like they did for the years that they were secretly uh, purchasing property, costing us all a lot of concern and even taxpayer uh, money. You know, I think it was Ronald Reagan who said, trust but verify. Honesty matters, and misrepresenting issues isn't honest. I've met the three people, California for never people, whatever you want to call them, <laughs> two different times. And each time, I'm going longer than this because I'm wrapping up. <laughs> this is where everything's already been said, but everyone hasn't yet said it. So um, I'm going to say it. Yes. Uh, I've met with them twice, and I got to run around both times to the point I was almost dizzy. They continued to tell us, even in the beginning when they were doing their polling, that was a political pitch, that they were going to do all this great stuff and nobody was going to have to pay for it. Nobody's taxes would go up. No one's fees would go up. When I met with them and I asked them about that, they said, well, we're going to pay our fair share. So what the heck is their fair share? And who's going to pay the rest? what's left over after they pay their fair share. Transportation, water infrastructure, uh, who pays the part other than their fair share? Where does the money come from? Other parts of the county? Other projects that need to be done? Other cities within the county? What doesn't get built? What doesn't get addressed? And who gets left out? This is a serious problem. This initiative puts us all in a very dangerous place. As you've heard, it removes all the existing land use uh, protections when we don't know what is going to go. We don't know what they're going to do. We know what they say they're going to do, but we don't know what they're going to, uh, going to do. This is not trust. This group of Silicon Valley billionaires and the people that represent them want us to give them a blank check without any verification. They're promising parks, water supply, infrastructure, um, uh, water supply infrastructure, transportation infrastructure, renewable energy schools, transportation uh, infrastructure uh, for an area the size of Vacaville. The size of Vacaville. How do we make sure this is done? When you use the initiative process, there's no development agreements made on this. This is just re relax the restrictions, remove the restrictions, and trust us. Trust us. Well, you know, this isn't our first roundup. Think about it. I used to represent Siskiyou County, Copco. When I met with people up there, they said, developers told us that they were going to build this great community. Some developer came in, bought a couple of ranches, put together uh, kitchen table parcel maps. One guy said, they convinced me to buy four lots. They said, you can build on one, 
and you can have three to sell in your retirement to make ends meet. He said, as soon as they sold out, they bought the ranch next door and did the same thing. He said, my property is, just, is worth nothing. I'll never sell those on the three lots. But the good news is I have a house on the lake. Well, if you've been following the news, you know the dams have come down. There is no more Copco Lake. California City, north of, uh, of, of L.A., 1958, a Czechoslovakian immigrant came to California, made a little bit of money, and said, I'm going to build a city that will be the size bigger. It will be bigger in size than Los Angeles. They had a couple of wells that seemingly would pump water forever. 66 years later, there's 15,000 people there living in the middle of nowhere, and those wells are dry. Now they're promising us $700 million worth of, I don't know, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of a carrot to get your vote. They're promising everything but rainbows and unicorns. <laughs> I'm serious. They want, they're promising everything. Money to communities, money for scholarships, money for first-time home buyers. When the when the press asked them about the first-time home buyers, they said, "Well, maybe it'll be grants, maybe it'll be a loan." <laughs> Who's looking at this? Who's checking to see what it is they're doing? If they give you a grant to buy a home, you know there's tax implications for that. You're gonna be taxed on that. Your uh, your uh, your tax. Uh, bracket may in fact go up. This is dangerous stuff. And okay, you win. <laughs> I'll just close by telling you one thing. No one who got on this stage today to talk has anything to gain from this. Not a thing. But we all believe in the planning process. We understand the need for orderly and safe growth. And all of us have been misled by this organization that wants to come in and take over our county. This is wrong. You, they have never gained my trust. And just remember, trust is something you can't buy with money or with false promises. Thank you. 
The next number, three, four, four, seven. Three, four, four, seven. Beautiful verbatim from our native nurture. Three, four, four, seven. Are you here? Very fancy. Okay. 